right the way through World War II. The Douglas C-47 or DC-3 developed from uh, two previous designs, the DC-1. And we certainly spoke earlier about the sound of the Merlin engine, how it was unmistakable. So is that. You, you can instantly... US Army Air Corps received its first militarized DC-3 in August 1939. And of course went on to fly throughout every country in every theater of the war. Flew China across the hump as biscuit bombers in uh, New Guinea, glider tugs, parachutists at D-Day, Arnhem, the Berlin Airlift, Korea and also in Vietnam. Now Peter, uh, we saw the Battle of Britain Spitfire yesterday which has um, some white stripes um, along it and I also noticed the DC-3 has the same. Well this particular aircraft flew on D-Day, flew with the 79th Troop Carrier Squadron from RAF Membry in Berkshire. <laughs> so those were the D-Day markings. Every Allied aircraft that flew on D-Day carried those markings, so it was an instant identification transferred to the RAF. Now this is a consecutive serial number, but one, to Dragamut, which uh, also flew on D-Day. Now this, this machine, as we said, was transferred to number one heavy. Over 40 were recovered and flown back to the UK. This uh, machine not only participated um, in Scottish aviation and marshals, but later Ferranti, who modified the airframe really considerably with a non-standard nose and cockpit windscreen. After a lot of service and storage, it was actually going to be scrapped. And, um, saved from the Catterick fire dump by Mike Woodley of Aces High with the assistance from Lord Onslow at the Imperial War Museum. Restored and in September 1939 was uh, a civilian registered and it's been continuously operated by Aces High ever since. It has been said and rightly that without the DC-3 or the C-47. So we understand this could be the last pass. Um, so Andrew can absolutely see you from that amazing cockpit. So please raise your arms and leg comes past. Come on, right hand team. We know you're the best. And the left. anywhere in the world, or Antarctica, or the Arctic, that has not seen.